Hey everyone, and welcome back to Efficient Gaming. Today we are talking about The Witcher Monster Slayer and Monster Week 11, which is Kalidus Week. Uh, it's a new monster that's come out, which is of the Spectre class, and it's actually a Spectre class that comes out during the day. So that's, again, like when we had our Wild Wearer and all those sorts of things, it's another great addition to the game in the fact that Spectre Remains are now available during the day. So they were a bit more scarce before, you'd have to sort of get to a Nemeton or go out at night if you wanted them, but now we've got another monster that can be around to give us those. Now it's not a common monster, so it won't be around all the time, but there's plenty of them this week. So why don't we check out the time tasks and see if we can give you some tips. Okay, so this week, like all weeks, we are going to just have a very quick look at the news first. That is not where the news is. Alright, so, Monster Week, Kalidus. What's that? Those knights are on fire. I've heard stories about them, but never thought they were real. Quick, we don't have time to lose. They will burn everything. Check the tasks I prepared to stand up to them. Be brave and don't hesitate. Remember, this monster can be found near human settlements, most commonly during the day. It's a nice change from the ones that have been in the bit more of a off or out of the way biomes uh, recently. So this one I've actually found everywhere. And as you can see from my time tasks, they're actually all already complete just from today. Um, I've got uh, 18 out of 30 on the last level of the trophy, so I just need 12 more this week, and I'll have that trophy level 3, and we'll be done. We won't even have to do that monster again. So, I'm really liking the level of spawns that are around this week with these, but again, it, it's more down to the biome than anything else. The fact that I'm in a built-up area, so there are a lot of these. I sometimes travel quite a reasonable distance for work, so I will encounter some of these on my transportation. All right, but again, just like the things, the um, information, uh, weekly information said, occurrences can be found near human settlements, most commonly found during the day. So that is pretty standard for that. All right, but again, back to the time task. So pretty standard this week, reasonably easy, like before. Made much easier by the fact that this is a monster that's actually abundant. Kill 15 Kalidi, Kalidi being the uh, plural of Kalidus. Kill 10 monsters from the Spectre class while using Spectre Oil. We use Spectre Oil in some of the more difficult tasks below, but then you can just use the other 10 that you need um, on anything else. Kill a Kalidus after performing at least 5 perfect parries. Perfect parries on these aren't particularly difficult, but I'll show you a couple of videos where I've done that. Kill three Kalidi without using any bombs or signs. So most things I kill without bombs anyway. So for me, this is just put on a uh, Spectre Oil and make sure that I don't uh, use any signs. That was actually difficult. The first time I attempted this, I actually failed and used signs the whole way through and thought, why didn't I get the achievement at the end? And then, oh, that's why. Kill a Kalidus without performing any melee attacks. This is the most long and drawn out one. However, I didn't use any bombs either because I'm, I don't know, I don't see the point of making and stockpiling bombs when you don't need to. Uh, so we'll show you how we do that. But obviously this task can be made even easier if you use bombs too. And gather 50 units of powdered monster tissue. That's all about inventory management and the monsters that you kill anyway. So why don't we have a look at our first video, which is going to demonstrate uh, how to kill a Kalidus while performing at least five perfect parries. Okay, so again, this is just uh, part of my journey towards work. And as you can see, we have already come across a couple of these. So we're going to click on this one and we're going to use our Manticore Silver Sword. Not Manticore Silver Sword. Manticore Steel Sword and... Our swift and swallow potions. 
because the Swift and Swallow potions are going to negate any of the damage that it does to us, which gives us plenty more opportunities to get our perfect parries. Now, normally I'm quite good and I can get a perfect parry on after the first three hits, but I don't know, I was just a bit off with that. But we do plenty of perfect parries throughout, so you'll be able to get a bit of an idea about the timing. Seeing me being slow on them gives you a bit more of an idea on the timing as well. So there's the first couple that I failed. I think I'm about to get a few in a row. I'm just doing very slow, gradual damage, but I will stop just to make sure that I've got all those perfect parries before we finish killing it. Uh, as you can see, our Swift and Swallow Potion are topping our health up there every time we get hit, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Parrying, one, is important, otherwise it will eventually kill you if you don't do that. But since perfect parries are the aim of this anyway, I don't know whether I did five or six or seven or eight total perfect parries, but I like to overdo it just to make sure. But in any case, I think we've nearly done enough, and I will probably finish off the monster in a second. I just really want to do one more, I think. Even though I'm probably already at like six. And I did quite a few failures there. <laughs> but we finished, and that monster's dead. It is an interesting new monster. Um, it's got a different an attack animation, it's a different model to any of the other ones, so it's not just a reskinned version of anything else. And as you can see, we have done that. Alright, on to the next one. So this is killing a Kalidus with no bombs or signs. So again, this is easy, it's just a preparation. I'm going to be using the same sword, my Manticore Steel Sword. I'm going to be using my Spectre Oil, and we're just going to try not to use signs. So I think in this first example, I failed because I just went back into my normal habits, and yep, yeah, there we go. Use a sign. Uh, so obviously we are not going to get the credit for this. This is a good example of using a... Spectre Oil though, and we're going to get the credit for that. This was actually the first monster that we did. Um, so normally I try and do one of the tasks for the first ones that I come across just so I can get you the videos. So that was me finishing a... Uh, daily task, not one of these tasks. So I'm looking and I'm confused. Why haven't I? Oh, signs after I read it again. So I think there's another one pretty close by, which we're just going to click on and we're going to do, and we're going to do a better job this time of actually not using signs. So even though I think the majority of the signs that I used out throughout the last um, battle were non-damaging or non-directly damaging signs because I use Quen a lot, um, it still counts as using a sign. It'd be nice if it didn't, but it still counts. So. Alright, so that sign is just being there, charged the whole time. We haven't used it, no bombs. Just a Spectre Oil to make it a little bit easier. If you did want to make it a bit easier for yourself, if you're not that good at perfect parries or perfect crits, you could put on either a Swift or a Swallow Potion. I would suggest probably a Swift is going to be more useful than a Swallow if that's the only one that you're going to put on. You could always put on both to make it extra easy. Alright, and on to our last one. Now, it's worth noting that after I did the... Um, doing it with five perfect parries... Um, I thought about what, how I was going to do this one, and this one, I'm pretty much using the same strategy, the Swift and the Swallow Potion, to do this with no melee, because we want our survivability, there's no point putting a oil on, because the oil only increases the damage from melee attacks, which I've recently learned, or I really should have known that before, but yeah, so we're allowed to parry, because that doesn't count as melee attacks. Um, if you had the perfect parry ability from the skill tree, the damage from that would count and make this a bit quicker, but we are using Ard to slow down its attack timer so that we don't get attacked as much, and also because I didn't realize that the fire damage that we deal to it a little bit later on 
is actually slightly higher. So we're not getting all perfect parries, but it's not about perfect parries, it's about not dealing any melee damage. So we are literally just using signs here. Um, this is just because I am lazy and couldn't be bothered crafting more bombs to use against this, but in this example, it's all about no melee, so we could be using bombs. I mean, we could be using... What would be the best type of bomb to use against this one? Let's have a very quick look on the side in our inventory. So this monster is weak to steel. That's all it is weak to. So the best bomb to use for this would be... down my list to get some bombs. So all bombs deal kinetic damage. So I think we'd probably be looking at the Grape Shot because the Grape Shot does both steel, which the monster is weak to, and kinetic damage. So if you want to make this task a bit easier on yourself and not take quite as long as it's taking me in this couple of minute video here, um, you will want to craft a couple of Grape Shot bombs and that will just make this so much easier and quicker. I would still recommend the Swift and Swallow Potion because you want it for survivability because all these things like the bombs and that do help but they are still slower than defeating a monster using melee and signs and bombs so you want that extra survivability in there so regardless of what you do whether you craft new bombs or not I would still recommend Swift and Swallow Potion for your survivability. And thankfully we are nearly there. Uh, one of the things that actually made this a little bit easier for me is the skill that I have at the bottom of the uh, signs tree, which allows occasionally uh, the cooldown to be ignored after casting a sign. So if you had a look at, through that video, you'll see that I cast two or three uh, Ignis in a row or Ards in a row, um, just because that refreshed the cooldown after each one. And as you can see, we did complete that task and we're now done. Again, like I said, you can complete the perfect parries during this one because you've got so many parries to do that you may as well attempt them both at once. I didn't, I did them separately uh, because the ones that I was doing previously, I sort of like to tackle tasks in their order approximately. Um, but yeah, so that was this week's timed tasks. They are not that difficult, and especially with the tips I've given you. And the monsters, if you're in a built-up area at all, uh, seem plentiful during the day. So if you've got some time to play during the day, maybe go for a walk on your lunch break, uh, you should encounter enough of these, I would have thought, to finish off this with reasonable ease. Now, this is something I would love to see for all of the monsters, but I'm also not completely opposed to them being more concentrated in the biomes. I think there have some been su some suggestions from other people to have them spawn occasionally outside of those biomes. And I do think this is a really good idea because it's. I always come back to the Kiki More Warrior event because that one for me was ridiculous. I was in the exact biome that uh, was needed for that. I was down by the river in a built up area next to a park that had woods in it. So it was literally meeting all of the criteria and there was still maybe one spawn in a huge area every couple of hours. It just was not a fun event to grind. So in my opinion, this is much better, although I don't know whether they've gone slightly too over the top here, but again, it might just be that this is a popular biome in my area. So they are everywhere because that biome is everywhere. So of course I'm going to encounter more. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we'll be in touch next week for the Valentine's Day special event, which just as a general prediction, I'm guessing we're going to get something similar uh, to what we had for the Christmas event. And maybe they're going to bring back the... Uh, gingerbread cookies because one of them was sort of heart-shaped so that would kind of fit in with Valentine's Day uh, but I'm interested to see what the Witcher universe gives us for this type of thing maybe there'll be some more lore for me to teach you uh, Witcher universe lore and maybe where that ties in with Valentine's Day but we'll look forward to that next week so leave any comments below 
and we'll catch you guys soon. Bye.